A 16-year-old lady named Jody was fortunate to have everything in life. But what seems to be a blessing for many was a curse for her, a towering height. The lady is six feet tall, way unusual for girls in her age. Because of that, Jody had a hard time finding clothes, so she often used a male wardrobe and shoes. Her self-esteem was also affected, and she had difficulties dating men. One time at the library, a new guy at school was reading a book across from Jody's table. He was cute, and the lady glanced at him from time to time. The man, on the other hand, finds Jody attractive. He pretended not to understand what he was reading to start a conversation with her. Jody, who happens to finish the book, explains the story's plot to the man. She was glad to help, but she needed to go. Jody packed her things and was about to leave the place. The man got up and introduced himself. He asked Jody to go out with him but freaked out, discovering she was extremely tall. The man was turned off and went away. Her father, Richie, first noticed her unusual height when she was three. Jody was almost four feet that year, which concerns him the most. They went to a physician and asked if there were hormones her daughter could take to stunt her growth. There was an available one, but it involves health risks such as infertility. Jody's parents had no choice but to accept their daughter's fate. Years passed by, and Jody's height continued growing at a fast pace. In all her class pictures, she would always stand at the center, behind everyone else. Currently, Jody is in junior high school, wearing men's shoes, size 13. Her towering height would constantly attract bullies asking, what's the weather up there? Jody was used to it, but there were times it would hurt. Good thing her girl best friend Farida is always there to cheer her up. Farida is a smart, bubbly, and brave girl with a positive mindset, and she would drive away Jody's bullies anytime. Unlike Jody, her older sister, Harper, was confident and won multiple beauty contests. She is beautiful like their mom, and it adds more to her insecurities. While having lunch, Richie noticed she was getting distant from the family. He was concerned about her condition, and maybe she was feeling something but didn't want to disclose it. Her dad was paranoid after reading various stories from people with the same condition as her. Some passed away, while others experienced a different complication. Richie also wondered why his daughter never played piano like she used to. Jody is excellent in playing piano, and that is her edge in the family. The lady assured them she had no health issues and she was fine. The reason why she stopped playing the piano was that people would tend to watch her and eventually notice her unusual height. She doesn't want to create another reason for them to stare at her. The next day, Jody attended her chemistry class. Her annoying childhood best friend, Jack Dunkleman, was interrupting her focus. Jack loves Jody, and he is very vocal about it. He is the weird guy in school who carries books in a milk crate. And even if Jody had known him for a long time, the milk crate thingy remained a mystery to her. Jack has been asking Jody out countless times, but the lady is reluctant. Jack doesn't qualify on her boyfriend's checklist, and he is also way shorter in height than the lady, but Jack was persistent. He even brought a smoothie for Jody to impress her. Suddenly, a tall and attractive guy joined the class. He is Stig Molin, a Swedish exchange student staying on campus for the entire year. His perfect face and confidence amused everyone. Jody's world stopped as Stig walked slowly into her vision. He was so handsome, and she couldn't stop staring. Jack saw how Jody was mesmerized by the new guy. He felt bad about himself because Stig was taller than him. He was Jody's type, and he was threatened about it. Jack tried getting back Jody's attention, but her eyes were fixed on him. Instead of introducing himself, Stig went to the board and tried answering a problem. Jack wished he was dumb, but the man effortlessly solved it. All the ladies, including Jody, screamed and clapped their hands out of amusement. From that day on, Jody was eyeing on Stig and making ways to get his attention. It was her first time initiating the first move with the guy, so she consulted Farida about it. For Farida, Stig did not notice her towering height because he is from Sweden, and people there are also giants. Aside from Jody, girls on the campus were also dying to be noticed by Stig, and one of her competitors is the famous Kimmy Stitcher. Kimmy has been her top bully since nursery. She would embarrass her in front of the class, which never stopped until they went to high school. Kimmy saw Stig in the locker area and thought it would be the perfect time to get his attention. She fixed herself and asked for help from Liz, her best friend. Kimmy walked to the hallway, intimidating other ladies. Jody was annoyed to see Kimmy flirting with her crush. She knows basic Swedish and uses it to impress Stig. The man was amused and loved her personality that instant. Kimmy also offered to tour him around the state after learning he had never been to other places. Jack saw Jody in the locker area with Farida. She looked jealous at Kimmy talking to Stig. He cheered her up, saying it would be better not to date Stig. Their tall gene combined will be a nightmare if they end up marrying. If she bears a child, she will definitely undergo a cesarean, and the baby will suffer as she experienced. It makes sense for Farida, but Jody is not convinced. Her heart belongs to Stig, and she will continue admiring him from afar. Jack was carrying his milk crate while waiting to be picked up by his mom. Mrs. Dunkleman was giggling when she arrived, and she was with Stig. Jack wondered how he became close to his mom. Mrs. Dunkleman was delighted to inform him about being the host family for Stig. She volunteered to let the exchange student stay in their house for a year. Jack freaked out and pleaded with his mom to deport him. However, Mrs. Dunkleman's decision was final, and he couldn't oppose that. 
Jack hopped into the backseat, murmuring to his mom. It was already late at night, and Jody couldn't sleep. She went to her sister's room and found her watching a pageant video. Harper is a perfectionist, so she analyzes her performances and takes down notes on how to improve herself. The beauty queen found herself fat on the camera and decided to limit her carb intake. She will be joining another contest, so she needs to stay fit. To make that possible, she instructed Jody to slap her whenever she eats unhealthy snacks. Out of nowhere, Jody asked for help on how to be noticed by a guy. Harper jumped because of excitement. She had been waiting for the time her little sister would ask for love advice. She dreamed of dressing Jody like a lady, but never had a chance since it was not her style. The beauty queen promised to do an extreme makeover to help her out. Jody revealed she fell in love with an exchange student from Sweden. Hearing that, Harper discouraged her. She also dated an exchange student back then and he was a Paraguayan named Diego. It was a terrible experience because all the girls wanted him, and it was war. She feels like going to battle every day to keep him interested in her. Harper asked the lady if she was willing to go all the way to be noticed because if not, she should stop her fantasies. It was Jody's first time falling in love, and she had no idea how much effort Harper was describing. It was a fine morning, but Jack was in a bad mood waking up with Stig. He was feeling at home since his mom was hands-on in accommodating him. Jack hates him so much, and he is vocal about it. At the cafeteria, Jack was ordering food when Stig stood beside him. He was persistent with the idea of being friends. He believes they can establish a great bond if he would only give it a chance. Jack refused and told the man it wouldn't work. He was so concerned about what the people thought once they got along. They are quite the opposite of each other, and the students would quickly notice how unattractive he is. Stig is tall and handsome, and standing beside him would make his appearance even worse. Stig didn't know anyone in school, so he pleaded again. Jack advised him to look around because making friends is definitely not a problem. Stig looked everywhere and saw all ladies staring at him, smiling. Jack sat at Jody and Farida's table, and he was annoyed by the way their eyes were fixed on Stig. The man was all alone at the following table, since he was not comfortable sitting with the girls dying to get his attention. Suddenly, Kimmy stood up and confidently walked to Stig. She also sat beside him, making other ladies furious. The competition started when another woman sat beside him. After her, more and more girls transferred to his table, glaring at each other. Stig panicked, seeing the ladies fighting to win him. Jody, on the other hand, stood up but never dared to join. Her heart ached as she silently admired Stig from afar with beautiful girls around him. In the end, Kimmy won the glaring fight since the bell rang, and the others rushed to class. Farida became the living diary of Jody and Jack. The lady was bothered for more than a week seeing Kimmy and Stig's flourishing romance. They also go to lunch together, be partners in physical education and art classes, and go home inseparable. Jack, on the other hand, was concerned about Jody falling in love with Stig. He didn't understand why she was dying to date a man she barely knew over him, who had loved her since elementary. One time in their art class, Jody was annoyed with Kimmy sticking to Stig again. She was so flirty, and Stig looks enjoyed and never stopped her. Jack, who was painting nearby, could not focus on his work staring at Jody. There was a need to keep an eye on her because of Stig. He won't permit him to steal her longtime crush. Meanwhile, Kimmy's friend, Liz, was attracted to Jack and made a move by admiring his painting. The man was flattered by her compliment and couldn't stop smiling. The competition to win Stig was getting intense, and Jody couldn't let Kimmy have him. She is ready to go all the way and asks for help from Harper. The lady was busy practicing for the teen Miss Louisiana, but she was willing to help her little sister. However, Harper felt she couldn't do it alone, so she sought help from their beauty queen mom for Jody's transformation. They went to the mall to buy cosmetics. Jody doesn't wear makeup because she hates it. Harper was to the rescue in finding the lipstick shade that would match her skin tone. They also visited the boutique where Helene was hands-on in finding dresses for her daughter. Her choices were great, and Jody tried everything in the fitting room. However, dresses were not her style. In the end, she bought trousers and tops that are not skin-revealing but look chic on her. Later that night, Jody was surprised when Stig called her. His voice was unique, and she couldn't believe how he got her number. She was flattered that the most popular guy in school had finally noticed her. They continued talking until Stig invited her to be his date for the homecoming night. Jody froze for a moment and forgot how to respond. She was still looking for a date, so she agreed instantly. However, Jody eventually discovered it was only a prank call, and it was Schnipper on the line. Schnipper is Kimmy's friend, and she was the one behind it. Kimmy saw how Jody stared at Stig in the art class. She was sure it was something, and she looked in love with him. Because of that, she was included on the list of girls Kimmy plans to eliminate in the competition. It was her strategy for Jody and the other ladies to back out. Kimmy also insulted her, saying she may be the tallest girl but not the prettiest. Jody had cried throughout the night. The confidence Harper and her mom gave was all gone in a snap. The next day, Jody's family waited for her in the living area. It took her a long time to be downstairs, and Richie was losing his patience. Harper and Helene calmed him down and told the man about Jody's transformation. He needs to wait because his daughter will be wearing makeup and dressing for school, and that will definitely take time. 
Richie got excited about Jody, but they were all disappointed when she came down with pants and sweaters. It was her everyday outfit, and nothing had changed. Jody doesn't look happy, so they never bother to ask what happened. Stig and Jack went to school together after they became friends. Jack was overwhelmed by the number of ladies greeting him because of Stig. The Swedish guy admitted he was not used to all of the attention, because in his country, more men are attractive than him, and his face is nothing when compared. Meanwhile, Jody was hiding in the toilet. She was still ashamed to walk around the campus and bump into Kimmy. Farida came and knocked on the door. She cheered her up and requested the lady to go out. Nothing will happen if she remains there. And if she shows she was affected, it will only keep her enemies stronger. Jody wants to be alone, so she flushed the toilet to keep Farida away. Classes started, and Jody was forced to go out. She slowly sneaked out from the comfort room to make sure no one saw her. On the way, she rattled to see Schnipper walking in her direction. She immediately went to the other side, but Kimmy was there also. She was trapped in the hallway and had no choice but to hide at random doors to escape. She found herself in the music room, and someone played the piano. It was Stig, and he was looking at her. The man played the instrument again, but he was too bad at it. Jody suggested to stop aiming for the high notes and relax his hands. Stig tried another round following Jody's advice, and it worked. Because of that, he got interested in her. He assumed Jody was good at it, so he invited her to play. The lady was rattled because she never did it for years already. She was also shy to show her skills to him. The lady explained she was bad at the piano because she had smaller hands than men. According to her, men's hands are broader and bigger, so pianists are mostly males. Stig never believed her and compared her hands to his. Their palms touched, and Jody felt butterflies. Since she was tall, her hands were as big as Stig's, and she had no more excuses not to play the instrument. Jody showcased her piano skills. Even if she never did it for years, the muscle memory did everything. She impressed Stig so much that the man requested her to play his favorite song. Jody played a great melody, and they duet with it. They looked at each other, and Jody found the moment magical. She never believed it would be effortless to entertain her crush, and she nailed it. They also had a conversation where the lady discovered that Stig likes music. He also loves watching musicals and theaters. Their moment was interrupted when someone was clapping behind them. It was Kimmy, and she was so mad at Jody for flirting with her man. Stig introduced her as his girlfriend, leaving Jody heartbroken. She thought their love story was only starting, and she never expected his instant relationship with Kimmy. Jody went home pissed off. She opened the door, and loud music welcomed her. She freaked out, seeing tall people everywhere. Some were on the stairs, while others were conversing with her father. The lady confronted her dad about it, because he seemed to have invited a club of tall people. Richie denied it, saying they were only his friends, and he requested them to come over for a little gathering. Jody never believed him because everyone wore caps with the Tip Toppers logo. Suddenly, a lady introduced herself as the chairman of the Tip Toppers Club. Their organization has been active for almost seven years, and they will be the second largest group of tall people in America if Jody joins as a member. She also spilled about her parents inviting them weekly to be in their house for chapter meetings. Jody removed the club's cap and went upstairs. She was disappointed in her father organizing a party without her permission. Richie thought it would be a good idea to make his daughter feel normal, but it turned out the opposite. The lady felt even worse with her condition and cried throughout the night. Jody got tired of her height and surfed on the internet about height reduction surgeries. It costs a lot, but there are cheaper ones in India. She also scrolled over the comments and saw people saying the surgery was too painful, and it took many months before they walked again. Jody continued crying, feeling hopeless. Her phone rang, and another prank call made her furious. Schnipper introduced himself as Stig, and his voice was convincing. The lady cursed him with all the words she could ever imagine. She also told him he chose the worst day to prank her again. She threatened to kick him with her size 13 nikes once she saw him at school. Instead of being mad, the man on the line was silent and let her talk. It was only that time she realized it was Stig. He also wondered why she was angry when he never did something to her. Jody felt embarrassed for shouting at her crush. It was fine for Stig, and he invited her to come over to watch a musical with him. Jody could not contain her happiness and jumped out for joy. Jack's jaw dropped seeing her on the doorstep. She looked more stunning than the Jody he knew before. She was wearing makeup and curled her hair for the first time. The man felt butterflies but wondered why she seemed overdressed for their study night. However, he was hurt learning Jody did not come over for him but for Stig. The man was also surprised by the sudden transformation and invited the lady inside. The two looked great watching a musical show, but Jack won't permit their romance to develop. He kept whistling and passing in front of the television. The man was not contented. He opened a bag of chips and munched it to create disturbing noises. He also turned on the blender and kept talking nonsense. Stig and Jody were irritated he won't leave them alone. Because of that, Stig decided to invite him over to shut his mouth. Jack was game to it and sat in the middle of the couch to keep them separated. He stared at Jody, laughing, but the lady glared at him. It was late at night, so Stig accompanied Jody home. Inside, Jody wondered where Kimmy was. Stig guessed she may have attended a party. He thanked Jody for coming because he had no one to watch the musical. Kimmy hates music, so he immediately thinks of inviting her. 
Jodi keeps mentioning Kimmy because she feels bad for being with her boyfriend. The lady admires her so much for being pretty, and Stig is lucky to date her. Jodi also expressed how insecure she is about herself because of her height. Stig cheered her up because even Kimmy felt insecure too. She was even jealous the last time after learning Jodi was good at piano. For Stig, Jodi is smart, fun, unique, and beautiful. She should be confident to embrace it. Jodi was flattered and made the first move to kiss him. Stig never pulled away and kissed her back. Jodi went home all smiling after the great night with Stig. She sneaked into her room because it was already late. She was startled because Harper was standing on the stairs wearing a gown. She looked so excited to know how the date with Stig went. Harper freaked out, learning they kissed. But Jodi was bothered by the idea of kissing a man in a relationship. She asked Harper how to undo what she did. The beauty queen said there was nothing to worry about because the man kissed her back. She also thought it was a great move, and she was proud of Jodi for stepping up in the competition. Stig, on the other hand, also had a hard time moving on after the kiss. He still feels Jodi's love and realizes he likes her more than Kimmy. He thinks he is a horrible person for cheating on his girlfriend. Bothered, he woke Jack up to ask for some advice. Jack was shocked about Jodi initiating the first move. He gasped for air as Stig describes the kiss. Jealous, he advised him to take advantage of the chance that he was dating the hottest girl on campus. He also reminded him to focus on being the homecoming king because once he returned to Sweden, he would never experience it again. Stig also asks the man if he can still be friends with Jodi because he loves her already. Jack discouraged him and recommended it would be better to cut ties with her. At the cafeteria, Kimmy was intimidated by how pretty Jodi was. She looked stunning, but Kimmy was in denial that she found her attractive. She asked Schnipper for a second opinion on the lady's new look. The man is also lost in the moment and finds her hot. She looked more confident than ever, so Schnipper teased Kimmy to better watch her back. Meanwhile, Jodi shared with Farida about the kiss, and she also described how perfect it was. However, she was bothered by the thought of stealing Stig from Kimmy. Farida encouraged her to do so because, for her, Kimmy didn't deserve him. Stig finished ordering food and looked for tables. Jodi assumed he would sit beside her, and Farida was also excited about it. They were disappointed because the man only glanced at Jodi who was cold to her. Kimmy was delighted to see Stig but confronted him last night for not responding to her texts. Stig reasoned out he left his phone silent and sounded like he had never cheated the previous night. He saw Jack with food, so he invited him over. Jody was jealous about Jack joining Stig and friends, instead of her and Farida. They looked entertained as Jack made jokes. After Jack hung out with Stig's friends, Liz came to notice him. The lady was also attracted to him because of his sense of humor. The two became close after learning they prefer gluten-free food. Jack was biking home when Jody came to ask about Stig. She was wondering why he was cold to her. Jack discouraged her from flirting with him because she would only be hurt in the end. Jody changed the topic and asked him about how Stig found her kiss. She got no answers, so she followed him until they reached home. Stig opened the door, so Jody grabbed the chance to talk to him. She apologized for the kiss because it might be why he kept avoiding her at school. It was fine for Stig, and he also apologized for it. The reason why he was cold to her was that he had no idea how to react. He is dating Kimmy, and it is wrong to kiss another woman. In the end, the two agreed to be friends and forget about the incident. The next day, Frida and Jody joined the school's marching band. Jody saw how happy Stig was with Kimmy, and she respected his decision. Farida invited her to dance to the loud music to move on. Jack, on the other hand, starts to date Liz. Jody feels jealous that he hangs out with her more for the past few days. While trying to enjoy the festive moment, Jody was terrified when Kimmy approached her. She thought Kimmy already knew about the kiss with Stig. But she was wrong because the lady shipped her to Schnipper, who was dying to date her. She invited the lady to the escape room on Friday and joined their circle. Farida was against Jody hanging out with Kimmy and her friends. She had already tricked her before, but she never learned a lesson. Farida walked out when the lady insisted on going. Friday night came, and the couples arrived at the meeting place. Stig was with Kimmy, Jack with Liz, and Jody with Schnipper. Kimmy opened up about the homecoming hangout party and asked who would host it. Jack volunteered since his mom will be out of town for the weekend. Jody enjoyed the escape room game until Stig and Jack kiss their partners. She doesn't want to be left behind, so she also kisses Schnipper. However, Jody doesn't want to pretend, so she walks out and cuts ties with Schnipper. Weeks passed, and Jody finally had confidence, but she felt alone, losing her best friends. While organizing her things in the locker, she found a note from Stig. The man wants to meet her at the piano. Stig was jealous the last time Jody kissed Schnipper and realized he couldn't lose her again. The man confessed his love, and he is willing to break up with Kimmy just to be with her. He plans to do it tonight so that they can meet after. Jody refused because her sister's pageant would be later. Instead, she invited him to be her plus one to watch teen Miss Louisiana. Stig can't contain his happiness in dating Jody. He also asked her to be his date for the homecoming party. The two also agreed to go to Jack's place like couples. Harper was delighted to hear such news. She was also happy for Jody for finally reaping the reward she deserved. The ladies had a heart-to-heart -heart talk, where Harper expressed her happiness for the past months since Jody started opening up to her. 
They never had that close relationship before Stig came into her life. Jody, on the other hand, hesitates to share everything with her older sister because she is always busy with her pageants. It was fine for Harper, and she was not disturbing her. Jody means more to her than any crowns and titles. Jody's parents were looking forward to meeting Stig. It was the first time their daughter introduced a guy to them. They also promised never to do anything to embarrass her. The pageant started, but they wondered why he never arrived. Jody thought he was only late, so she waited for more. The family cheered Harper as she slays the talent portion. On the question and answer portion, Harper responded well and faced the crowd with confidence. At that moment, she noticed the vacant seat beside her sister and was pissed off at Stig. The pageant was almost finished, but no guy appeared. Harper won the crown as Teen Miss Louisiana, but the whole family felt bad seeing Jody crying. Harper comforted her little sister in the back seat. Richie, on the other hand, was so mad that a guy stood up to his daughter. He comforted Jody, and he will punch Stig's face once they met. The homecoming hangout party at Jack's place started. The lady went there to confront Stig. The man reasoned out he helped Jack prepare the house. The guests also arrived early, so they were busy entertaining them and lost track of time. Jody believed him but got disappointed that he never broke up with Kimmy as he promised. The lady walked out, realizing she was wasting time for a man who never liked her. Meanwhile, Liz and Jack were having a great time at the party, when the lady invited him to be her date for the homecoming night. Jack was reluctant, and it made Liz confused. She thought he liked her because of her gestures when they were together. Jack apologized and admitted he was in love with someone. Liz immediately figured out it was Jody because he stared at her differently in the art class. Liz wondered why he never dated her. Jack was silent for a moment. It may be embarrassing to say to Liz, but he told her he was not Jody's type. However, he is willing to spend his life waiting for her until she likes him back. Liz understands his feelings and never hates him for dumping her. Richie saw his daughter running to her room, crying. He felt bad, imagining what his daughter went through. She has suffered so much because of her height, and this time it was because of a man. He knocked on her door and promised never to say anything that would embarrass her. He told Jody how much he loved her and always be there whenever she needs help. Jody did not respond, so he went downstairs. Richie saw the piano, and remembered how the little Jody back then would request songs from him. He missed the good old days, so he played the instrument. Suddenly, Jody sat beside him and rested her head. She never said a word, but Richie was so happy to restore their father and daughter bonding. Jody's mom was emotional to witness a beautiful moment from the kitchen. The next day, Jack came to Jody's room. He missed her even more as he stared at their childhood photos. Jack sat on her bed and touched her hair. Jody thought he was a stranger, so she punched his throat to defend herself. The lady apologized after finding out it was Jack. Jody noticed his black eye and wondered how he got it. Jack accidentally fell from his skateboard after taking a crazy turn. He also shared he was grounded after his mom returned early than expected. She arrived home, and the house was damaged from the party. Part of the punishment was never to attend the homecoming night. Jack apologized for not acting like a best friend to her recently, and he got her a present to make up for it. Jody was excited to open it but wondered why it was high heels. She is already tall, and she doesn't need those. Jack intentionally bought it because he imagined her enrolling in a great university soon. He was teary when he told the lady to wear those in college to attract tall guys. He is confident that many boys would want to date and love her for who she is. He already gave up on thinking she would feel the same way for him. Jack also cheered the lady after learning about what happened to her in Stig. Later that night, Jody received a message from an unknown number. She introduced herself as Liz, and she sent her a video taken at the party. She believes that the lady must watch it as soon as possible. It was footage of Stig embarrassing Jody to everyone at the party. Everything was also planned, and he never meant to break up with Kimmy for her. He also denied liking the kiss because she made the first move. He did not realize Jack was there and heard everything. He can still remember the night he asked for advice because he found Jody's kiss passionate, and he fell in love with her. But now, he denied everything and trash-talked Jody. Jack was furious and threw his milk crate to Stig. He also corrected all his lies and told everyone the truth. The two had a fistfight, and the black eye earlier was Stig's punch. Jody felt bad for Jack. It was then that she realized how lucky she was to have him. She cried throughout the night, regretting how he treated him badly to impress Stig. When she felt better, she looked in the mirror, determined to fight for herself like how Jack fought for her. On homecoming night, students looked stunning in their dresses and suits. Everyone was in attendance except for Jack and Jody. Harper being the teen Miss Louisiana title holder was invited to announce the homecoming king and queen. The results were revealed, and Kimmy and Stig were hailed as the winners. Kimmy looked so happy to receive the crown. The venue was filled with loud cheers from the crowd since the two were also the most popular students. Stig, on the other hand, was unhappy. While they were dancing, Stig broke up with Kimmy. The lady couldn't accept it, so she nagged at him. 
they only stopped when the crowd went noisy. Jodi came, and everyone was mesmerized when she went to the stage. She looked stunning in her outfit, and she also wore the heels that Jack gave her. She seemed so happy and took the opportunity to grace the stage. The lady loves the new her, and she won't let anyone ruin the confidence she worked hard for. She was also thankful to the people who insulted her, because they were the ones who made her stronger. Everyone, including Harper, applauded her heartfelt speech. She also reconciled with Ferida that night. She did not stay long because she needed to go somewhere. Backstage, Stig was running to stop her. He was impressed by the speech and wanted to apologize. He already broke up with Kimmy, and he wants to ask for another chance. Jody smiled but rejected him. She already knows the truth, and she won't let herself be fooled by his cute eyes. Jody removed her heels and went to Jack's place. She arrived and found the man sitting on the stairs with his milk crate. Jack was surprised to see Jody visiting him. The lady asked why he lied about the black eye. But before Jack could explain, Jody interrupted. She confessed her love for him, making Jack in tears. He never expected Jody would ever like a stunted man like him. The lady teased him and said she had already revised her standards. Their love story may be late, but Jody wants to start over with him as a couple. Jack grabbed his milk crate and stood over it to kiss Jody, and in the end, we found out the purpose of his milk crate. 